Hey everybody, happy homebrew Wednesday. Alright, I apologize, my video postings have been sporadic at best lately, but I assure you that, you know, soon, within the next month or so, that's going to change. I'll be back to posting on a weekly basis. I've got a lot of updates for you guys this week, um, but before we get started, cheers. Yeah, that's good. Okay, this beer is the Cooper's Draft Kit um, that I received for Christmas. And I did this uh, mini mash style, which was kind of a learning uh, experience for me. I do, I do kits and I do all grains, but I never did a mini mash. But as you can see, it turned out it's carbonated. The color is wonderful. It's crystal clear. Okay. And uh, it's a really good beer, guys. Really good. Now, the way I made this beer, I used the Cooper's Draft Kit. I used four pounds of American two-row and <clears throat> eight ounces of Crystal 60 um, for the fermentables. Uh, did a half-hour boil uh, just to make sure everything was sterilized. I did one ounce of autonom hops at 10 minutes. I did an ounce of autonom hops at flame out and I did a 30 minute steep on those. And then I put uh, two ounces of dry hops and uh, uh, I dry hopped with two ounces of uh, autonom in the primary. Now I know lots of people do it in secondary, but since I don't know. I just wanted to see what we're doing primary and it turned out great. Okay, now uh, the second thing that I have is right after I posted, the day after I posted my last video, I got mail. And the mail came all the way from New Zealand. And I don't know, back in December, uh, Chubby and Mrs. Chubby from Shadow Beast Brewery. They they had a competition for hitting 200 uh, subscribers. Oh, excuse me. And I told them not to worry putting my name in to the, uh, the competition. But they did anyway. And I won. And believe me when I tell you, I've never won anything like that ever. All right? I'm not that lucky. I mean, I've never even found $5 laying on the sidewalk. But what I got... And this is really cool, guys. All right, can you see that? I got a, a coaster. And believe me, Mrs. Brewing with Bill absolutely loves this thing. Because until I got this in the mail, I never used coasters. And, I mean, this in itself is actually pretty cool. You know, I mean... To actually be like drinking beer and putting it on, you know, your own custom coaster, um, that in itself is really cool. But I live in the United States, in Pennsylvania, on the uh, the East Coast, and I've got a coaster from New Zealand. Okay, and I guarantee you, I'm the only kid on the block with one of these. Something else that I got from them, and I mean, believe me, the Chubby and Mrs. Chubby. Thank you. Uh, really, this is cool. Okay, all you guys who aren't in the United States would probably recognize a packet such as this. Um, this is 100 grams of Motueka hops. That's about three and a half ounces uh, for all us uh, backwards uh, Americans. Still use the imperial system, you know. And, I mean, this is really cool. This in itself is really really cool because I can get three and a half ounces of hops here in the United States but I buy them one ounce at a time or eight ounces or a pound at a time but to get a three and a half ounce packet um, yeah it's pretty awesome and the alpha acid is 6.7 percent so what I'm gonna do with these is I am going to do I'm going to use these for my first all grain batch of 2014 and I'm going to do a New Zealand style 
pale ale. And let's see, I wrote down the recipe here for you guys. <clears throat> okay, all the grains are going to be five pounds of American tubero, five pounds of Maris otter, <clears throat> a pound of crystal 80 <clears throat> for color adjustment and add a little sweetness, and eight ounces of carahel. I'm going to use one ounce of motueka at 60 minutes for boiling, three quarters of an ounce of autonom hops at 30 minutes for bittering, one ounce of motueka at 10 minutes for flavor, and an ounce and a half of motueka at flame out for flavor and aroma. Now, all of my all grains are a no-chill style. Uh, what I do is I just put the cover on the, uh, the boil pot and I clamp it in place and I let it sit for two or three hours till it cools down slightly before I dump the whole thing into my fermenting bucket and my flame out hops uh, they're in a hop sock and they stay in the wart until right before I uh, put it in the fermenter if I hit all my numbers uh, my original gravity should be 1058 and if it ferments down to uh, 1014, and I'm actually hoping it gets down to 1010, really guys, but if it goes down to at least 1014, I'm looking at 5.9 to 6% ABV, and the IBUs on that beer are solid 44.0. Um, so that's going to be really cool. Okay, Chubby and Mrs. Chubby, thank you for sending that stuff to me when the, uh, the beer is kegged and uh, cleared and, and carbonated okay I will look into how much it will cost to ship you guys a pair of bottles from it alright I'll uh, bottle straight out of the keg and I'm, I mean I'm not making any promises but if it's gonna cost less than a hundred US dollars alright you guys will get the beers to uh, to try okay again thanks it, it's pretty cool when I got this in the uh, the mail I must have called well, and this. I must have called at least 25 people. Um, but anyway, a couple of updates I have going on. Okay, uh, my experiments last year with yeasting uh, were a phenomenal success. Um, so I'm going to continue that this year. <clears throat> and I've already got, you know, mother cultures uh, for 2014. Now these are the, uh, the yeasts that I'm going to use the entire year. I don't plan on buying any more yeast, uh, at least, you know, for this year. Starting in 2015, you know, I'll get rid of them and start with, um, you know, fresh yeast. I still have the US05 uh, yeast that I was using last year. I've reused it six times so far. Um, I do a 48 hour yeast starter uh, regardless. Uh, you know whether the yeast is you know new or old or how many generations it is and it still works um, <clears throat> I can still grow the yeast in a starter I can still pitch it into a beer it still ferments and works no problems but this year the uh, the yeasts that I have selected are Nottingham uh, yeast for my English style beers and Y Yeast's 1056 American Ale Yeast for my American uh, style beers. Okay, so uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, update on my wines. <clears throat> uh, I have five gallons of banana wine, um, one gallon of strawberry wine, one gallon of blueberry wine, one gallon of straw strawberry raspberry wine, and one gallon of my first ever attempt at a traditional mead. Okay, the banana wine, the strawberry wine, and the blueberry wine are second are currently sitting in a second racking. Okay, the, uh, the fermentation on them have, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, have already stopped. Um, they're all over 40 days old, and uh, they're just sitting there to uh, to clear to degas naturally and uh, they'll be ready about May or June okay so Justin from Orem Wines um, I haven't forgotten the uh, the wine mail that you sent me and um, when these wines are done uh, I'll return the favor okay uh, you'll get a package uh, with these wines um, so you can do uh, reviews on them 
I mean, honestly, the reviews I did of your wines really didn't do them any kind of justice because, I mean, I haven't even done that many beer reviews, but I'm getting better. But I've only ever done one wine review. Okay, and uh, like I said, I, I really couldn't give the, uh, the flavor and the body and, uh, you know, the levels um, any kind of uh, justice. Now, my mead and my strawberry raspberry, they're currently sitting in... Uh, first racking, okay, and uh, for anybody who doesn't make wine, uh, what that means is when you make the wine, it sits in a primary ferment, uh, fermenting bucket, basically, for about 10 days. Um, now, this, this pertains to fruit wines, um, <clears throat> and every day you take the lid off and you stir it gently, you know, like two times. After 10 days, uh, you rack it off the fruit particles and the yeast sediment on the bottom into your carboy, um, which uh, is called the secondary or the first racking. And there you will leave it for 30 days or until fermentation stops. And once it stops, you rack it a second time into you know, another carboy just to get it off all the uh, the compact lees. Um, basically what that does is it just gets all the junk out of it because um, at this point the uh, the wine and it's wine because it's fermented at this point all the, the solids in the wine will start to settle out and you want to keep as much of that out of your wine as possible so the second racking is basically it's in its third container but I've racked it twice and I'll probably let those sit for maybe two or three months before I do a third racking and come May or June I will see how clear that how clear they are and if necessary then I'll add um, the, uh, the two part uh, clearing agents um, the Kisosil and the, the Chittosan Okay. <clears throat> now the um, just as a side side note, the uh, the yeasts that I used for the banana, the strawberry, and the mead is uh, Lavlin's KIV eleven sixteen. Okay. Now the reason I used uh, the eleven sixteen on the mead is it's a it's a robust yeast. Um, it does well in warts, low in nutrients, um, and well like a mead because it's just water and honey and you know <clears throat> a little bit of yeast nutrient and, and raisins for body. And the, uh, the 1116 is a favorite for fruit wines because it tends to retain the, the natural fruit flavors longer than you know like say a normal wine yeast or something you would use for a grape wine. So that's why I use those. Now the blueberry and the strawberry raspberry, I used Lavalin's EC1118 champagne yeast. Okay, now the EC1118 champagne yeast has all the properties of the KIV1116, but it tends to ferment out pretty much down to point zero nine eight zero. <clears throat> Cheers guys. And I mean uh, alright the only reason I used that yeast is I was out of the uh, the KIV eleven sixteen. But those are the uh, the two uh, yeasts that I uh, that I use for my wines. Either one of them is fantastic. Um, they both pretty much work the same way. I have never, ever had a problem with either one of those yeasts. So if you haven't already used them, you know, check them out, guys. Uh, yeah. Well, that's all the updates I have for uh, um, for you guys. So. You know, thanks for watching the uh, the videos. Uh, like I said, sorry they've been uh, sporadic lately, but that's going to change. All right, hope uh, 2014 are treating you guys well so far. And as always, I hope your week this far has been good. I hope the rest of your week can be even better. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Cheers.
17.